students. Welcome to today's session. Today's session is on a very important part in pediatrics. In fact, this is one of the very, very basic part of pediatrics, which is nutrition. This nutrition chapter I have divided into two sections. The first section is on complementary feeding. In pediatrics, we have three main pillars, nutrition, development and vaccinations. Each of those I'll be covering and I'm splitting each of them into two. So here let's begin with the first part of diet that is complementary feeding. So what are the learning objectives of this session? We'll be learning to define what's complementary feeding, the principles, the initiation, attributes, frequency, techniques, hygiene of complementary feeding, enumerate the common complementary foods. I have outlined this session beginning with the clinical case scenario. We'll go to the introduction in complementary feeding, proceed to the common complementary foods, discuss the problems in complementary feeding, find out how to dietary manage these children, then my summary take home message and my test time. So let's begin with the clinical case scenario. A six month old infant is brought to the OPD for vaccination. The mother asks you whether we can start solid feeding for this child. She is breastfeeding her infant and giving one or twi one to twice daily bottle feeds for the baby with formula. So on examination, this is a well child. Anthropometry at six months of age, the way baby weighs seven kgs and a length of 67 centimeters. Head circumference is 43 centimeters, developmentally normal, systemic general examination were normal. So how to proceed in such a case? You see this child is otherwise well, child has come to you just for vaccination. But in pediatrics and child examination, even a vaccination visit should be taken as a point of care with the health care. So that is why you will examine this child holistically. Now this mother has asked for advice regarding complementary feeding. So that is what we are going to focus on with respect to this child. So we have a well child and now we are going to give the mother a plan for complementary feeding. So how are you going to evaluate this child for complementary feeding? You are going to see the anthropometry of the child. You are going to see the developmental readiness and whether breastfeeding is there or not. Now as per the history, breastfeeding was there and there was also top up formula feeding was there. Developmental readiness, what that is, let's see in the rest of the class. Anthropometry, we have this child weighing 7 kgs. Now at 6 months of age, we are expecting the child to weigh somewhere around 5.5 to 7.5 kgs as per anthropometry. We have this child weighing 7 kgs, which means till 6 months of age, the baby's nutrition has been adequate. Baby's length is adequate. Head circumference has also been normal. And we have this child who has now come ready for complementary feeding, having been taken care of very well by breastfeeding. Formula feeding is only once or twice a day. So how are you going to take care of such a child and how are you going to explain to the mother? That's what complementary feeding is all about. So first, what is the definition of complementary feeding? The definition of complementary feeding is a very commonly asked question in the exams, more commonly in the viva voce exams. At times, it also makes an appearance in your general case if your case is of malnutrition in your clinical practical examination. In the theory examinations, complementary feeding, development, nutrition, all are very, very specific questions. Let's deal with them as we go further in this class. So here we have the all important definition. Complementary feeding is defined as the systematic introduction of suitable foods to an infant's diet in addition to breast milk in order to provide the necessary nutrients to the infant. And what is important is that I have made a simple way of remembering this. They are by knowing the qualities of complementary feeding. Complementary feeding should be introduction of semi-solid foods, which are textured, gradually introduced into an infant's diet in addition to breastfeeding. So if you remember these four points, you can actually construct the definition by yourself. You will have to remember that semi-solid, textured, gradual introduction in addition to breastfeeding. And then you will write the definition as the systematic introduction of semi-solid or soft foods which are textured and gradually introduced into the infant's diet in addition to breastfeeding. This is the definition of complementary feeding. If you can complete by saying in order to provide necessary nutrients to the infant, it will be a 100% complete definition. Now, Earlier books which we had studied had used to take talk of a term called weaning. Slowly this term weaning itself weaned itself away from the 
textbooks and got replaced with complementary feeding. That is a very common question asked by the examiners as to what is weaning and what is complementary feeding. Weaning essentially implies gradual reduction and cessation from breastfeeding so that you can start solid feeds. That is what the term implies. Hence, it is no longer used. Complementary feeding on the other hand implies breastfeeding is sustained and the nutrition given by breastfeeding is complemented by adding appropriate foods till you reach a complete omnivorous diet. That is why the term weaning got weaned off and now we have complementary feeding. So, that is how if anyone asks you the difference between weaning and complementary feeding, this is what it is. Weaning essentially the term came where they said weaning off from the breast. Essentially it meant breastfeeding should reduce and the baby should start eating solid feeds. Essentially the meaning was quite similar where they said that you can wean off from breastfeeding slowly till 2 years of age. But however the term weaning itself means cessation and stop. That's why it's no longer used. Breastfeeding is still a very important part of the infant's diet from 6 months to 1 year of age. Hence because it's very important it is not weaned off. That is why complementary feeding is complementing breastfeeding to attain complete normal solid food diet. Okay. Now complementary feeding is essentially a very crucial period and this is the link between a very good breastfeeding stage, intrauterine growth, breastfed baby. So essentially the mother is taking care of the baby very well by herself and from there it goes on to complement to normal solid diet. This complementary feeding is a bridge between these two periods. And if this bridge sustains very well, there is a smooth transition from a breastfed baby to a complete baby who is on solid feeds. And if this bridge is not adequate and breastfeeding is not taken care of well and the complementary feeding is not complementing the breastfeeding well, it becomes shaky. When it is shaky, downfall of nutrition occurs and that is where the child falls into malnutrition or deviant kind of nutrition, micronutrient deficiencies, etc. So, important term which I have found is nutritional conditioning. What is nutritional conditioning? Nutritional conditioning is a learning process for acceptance of variety of foods by the infant. Such learning begins at 6 months of age and goes up till 24 months of age. So, this nutritional conditioning is very important because a newborn will not be able to appreciate about its environment as much as a 6 month old baby will. So, the nutritional condition slowly starts appearing as the brain develops. So, by 6 months of age, the baby is nutritionally conditioned to start trying out and tasting newer food items. Tastes, food preferences, family pot feeding all are being developed at this time and that is why we have to exploit this crucial window so that we can start and initiate complementary feeding in such a way that it can be sustained and switch over well to solid feeding. That is why it is a critical and sensitive period. Now, here I will be discussing regarding the bridge between complementary feeding and normal development. Is there a relation? How we introduce complementary feeding, how your developmental milestones are and how the myelination of the brain occurs. What is the relation between these with respect to feeding? So, we are going to discuss now the developmental ages and the feeding behaviors. At 4 to 6 months of age, the baby is essentially predominantly breastfed. You have the suck, swallow, breathe cycle and the baby is fed in the almost semi-reclined position during breastfeeding. Between 6 and 9 months of age, the baby in the gross motor milestones learns to sit up by himself with support. With support implies support of his or her own hands. So, baby is now sitting up by himself with the support of his hands. And once the baby is sitting up well that way, baby can be fed sitting in upright position using a spoon. Between 9 to 12 months of age, baby starts having a good grasp. Pincer grasp is developing and actual tight grasp where the baby can grasp cups, mugs, all this is attained. So, at 9 to 12 months of age, cup feeding can be initiated where the mother is holding the cup and the baby also is holding the cup and gently the baby is trying to drink from the cup. Finger feeding of mashed foods begin wherein the baby is able to take finger sized bites because now pincer grasp is beginning to come. So, small small bites of mashed foods can be taken using the baby's pincer grasp development. Baby takes small small pieces of food and the baby can eat by himself or herself. By 12 to 18 months, 
baby starts having self feeding with spoon all these days the baby is fed by the mother after one year if a spoon is given to the baby baby itself will put the spoon in the bowl of food and feed him or herself yes there is spillage there is smearing all over the mouth but self feeding with spoon begins by 18 to 24 months of age baby is actually able to feed quite well with spoon with very minimal spillage and almost most of it almost goes into the baby's mouth only a little bit smearing around the mouth exists by 2 to 3 years of age baby is able to self feed with one hand which is what is reinforced in most cultures to feed with one hand baby is able to chew with the lip closed as well as able to hold a cup with one hand and drink and that is how your left handedness or right handedness preference develops we know that that develops between 2 to 3 years of age handedness so as handedness develops a left handed baby will eat with the left hand and a right handed baby will choose to eat with the right hand so this is how you will be putting together developmental milestones and complementary feeding this way if you learn in this manner you will be able to fill up all your fine motor milestones without much requiring to mug up these milestones and then remember them